It is indeed a pleasure to welcome you to the United States Virgin Islands. Um, we are so happy to be your host, and we hope that we have been able to show you thus uh, far um, just a, a taste of what the Virgin Islands has to offer. We have three extremely unique destinations in one. Uh, St. Croix being the largest of the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, it's triple the size of uh, St. Thomas, and uh, St. John being the smallest. St. Thomas uh, has the unique honor of being the capital of the U.S. Virgin Islands. And so we're going to give you a quick presentation, but I just want to start with uh, our new campaign. Um, we have been extremely fortunate uh, with our numbers over the last uh, year in terms of arrivals, uh, boat, air, and sea. Um, and we, today, if you look out in the harbor, we have uh, five cruise ships in the harbor uh, in September, and you know we feel extremely blessed as a destination. Um, we also have seen significant increase in our airlift uh, with air coming from um, almost every point in the United States, and we're going to go into detail on that. But I'd like to just start first with our uh, new campaign, Virgin Islands Nice. So nice, so nice, sweet, sweet St. Thomas Nice, so nice, so nice, send cry full of pure vibes, so Uh, one of several commercials that we have and we are extremely proud of this from two angles um, first of all it has been my intent as Commissioner of Tourism uh, for the US Virgin Islands that we incorporate the local sounds flavor uh, our foods our culture into our entire marketing strategy um, the lyrics for our campaign is our own local uh, reggae artist uh, Delano Brown, better known as Pressure. And so it's, um, it's certainly a part of our um, entire theme uh, has the thread of the Virgin Islands is nice. And what we've done is we have incredible packages with uh, value added offers. And uh, I checked on Friday and we had sold over 3,000 room nights uh, this summer in packages that have been associated with our nice uh, promotion. Uh, and what we're doing is that you will see throughout, we'll be rolling out uh, in another few weeks our local NICE campaign. And it is, you know how people say, we want to, you know, see if some, we want to catch people doing great things. What's nice about the Virgin Islands? So we're going to have a campaign uh, on a local level where we are going to be asking people to text us their nice experiences. If you've seen someone, you've gotten exceptional service, you've had a great dish, I heard someone talking about Kalalu, you know, you've had a fantastic Johnny Cake, tell us so that we can tell the world. We also have on our website an entire NICE program where we've been engaging our visitors and they're telling us what's nice about the Virgin Islands and they've been sharing that. Uh, so it's uh, incorporated into that segment. Uh, I don't want to forget our Virgin Islanders that live outside of the territory. We have 110,000 population here in the Virgin Islands. 55,000 Virgin, Virgin Islanders live outside of the territory. We feel like this is an important engagement point for us, and we have a, a very robust ambassador program where the diaspora helps us to sell our nice. We have about 22,000 seats a week into the U.S. Virgin Islands, and these are all the direct flights that we have uh, into the territory. Um, Delta just resume or will resume service to St. Croix uh, in December, and I hope that you have seen the people in purple this week. Uh, those people in purple, although we love you, you, we thank you for coming, they're not just here for you. Uh, those greeters are at the airport uh, 365 days uh, a year, and it's a part of our overall welcome to our destination program. Uh, the expansion of Seaborn, and I think we have this either on Jump Drive or to give to you. So I'm going to go fast um, so that we could give you time for questions. Um, 
Virgin Islands, um, we will always find a reason to party. There's many of them in the Virgin Islands. Uh, we start the year with the Crucian Christmas Festival um, on St. Croix. Uh, we have three carnivals in the Virgin Islands because we don't want to leave out any one of our islands. So we start in, Janu in December and January on St. Croix. Uh, in April, right after Easter, uh, we have another carnival here on St. Thomas. And for 4th of July, we have another on St. Uh, John. In addition to that, we have some really incredible touch points of, I, of activities that happen. Our agriculture fair is one of uh, the best in the region. We're really pleased that we have uh, uh, farmers from Antigua, from Dominica, from all over the Caribbean. Um, because the Virgin Islands really and truly is a melting pot from the Caribbean, especially the Eastern Caribbean, you'll see lots of representation during our agricultural fair. Uh, the St. Croix Food and Wine Experience has grown into an entire week activity. It started first as just the Taste of St. Croix, uh, Taste of St. Croix that was a one-day event, and it's exploded with visiting chefs from throughout the uh, United States and Caribbean. Uh, the triathlon on St. Croix has been going on for 20 years, and it is, uh, we generally get two to 300 athletes that participate in it. Uh, these are just a few of the activities, the Love City Festival, Flavors on St. Croix, and the Paddle, uh, the park events that are happening on St. John. Taste of Two Islands. Uh, we have quite a robust uh, yachting uh, activities in the, in the territory, and these are just some of them in the yachting and water sports arena, uh, sport fishing that uh, happen throughout the year. Um, I'm going to skip over this because I think that uh, you have it in your packages. This is really an update on uh, the new things that have been added to the territory in terms of our attractions and activities over the last uh, year. Okay, I'd like to invite, um, we believe that a partnership between the public and private sector is essential. Uh, for selling our tourism product. And we've invited uh, Ms. Lisa Hamilton, the president of the St. Thomas, or the U.S. Virgin Islands uh, Hotel and Tourism Association to give a quick update on the hotels in the territory. Well, we're excited to report that there has been a fair amount of property updates and renovations going on um, this off season. Um, new property development, we're very excited about it. It's actually gonna be the first uh, Margaritaville branded uh, timeshare um, that will be opening in February. Uh, it's the former Renaissance slash Stokers slash Palace <laughs> Resort, uh, about 300 rooms. They're actually going to open. They'll be converting it into, um, at, when it's all built out, 220 um, villas, two and three bedroom villas, but they'll be opening in February with about 75 rooms, and it's very exciting. Um, we have the Westin in St. John. They are doing a $50 million renovation. They're converting um, uh, 50 of their existing resort rooms into timeshare. So they'll be left with 96 hotel rooms, but they've also refurbished the public spaces, um, their meeting room spaces, and their restaurants. The Ritz-Carlton is um, doing a multi-million dollar renovation that includes enhancements to their guest rooms and their wedding gazebo area. The Buccaneers spent $2 million this summer on renovations in the guest rooms and the public areas. Tamron Reef has uh, renovated their fitness center and conference meeting room space. And Bluebeard's Castle added solar panels um, and are actually, we're a finalist in Art is Green Sustainability Program. A fair amount of the properties, large and small, in the Virgin Islands um, are converting um, to solar and trying to do as many energy saving um, initiatives as possible because at, you know, 45 cents a kilowatt, as we all know here in the Caribbean, you've got to do something to save that revenue. Green Iguana, which is a nine-room hotel, we applaud them. They, have, they put in solar panels, and I just have to read this. She said, year to date, their carbon uh, footprint was reduced by over 18 tons, which is the equivalent of 468 trees. So if a nine-room hotel can do that from the beginning of the year, imagine the impact if the larger hotel are able to do that. And Best Western Care Beach just renovated the restaurant bar and added a 400 square foot uh, meeting room for the smaller uh, meeting events. And Emerald Beach is renovating guest rooms, bathrooms, and adding new case goods to the rooms. I think that, oh, Gallows Point, 
um, opens uh, their Ocean 362 restaurant. Frenchman's Reef has launched a few new initiatives. I know Joyce is here if you want additional details on that. They're mobile check-in and hosting brilliantly. And they have won a couple of meeting awards, which is great to see that come back. Uh, Keneal Bay is unveiling a new on-property restaurant um, and also a pre-teen center, which is a very interesting concept versus the kids' centers, the little kids' centers that have gone on in the past. And Sugar Bay Resorts, um, as you will hear in the next couple of days, I'm sure, because I know we have the AM Resorts uh, people speaking, but they have aligned with AM Resorts. It will be branded a Dreams Sugar Bay Resort, and um, they're going to have 125 of their rooms, hard goods and case goods, renovated by the end of September, and it's quite a beautiful product. If you haven't been over to Sugar Bay, they've changed the public space and cleaned it all up, and it, it's beautiful property. Oh, and lastly, thank you so much. We love Luana for that. And we want to uh, remind you guys that St. Croix is offering fam rates for travel agents. It's sort of a plan your own fam trip. Fam trip. Experience the island on your own schedule at your own pace with your own preferences. And they're offering an $89 a night fam rate for double occupancy through December 15th for all of the properties um, with the exception of the Divi, which is an all-inclusive property, and you can experience that for $139 a night. So you can go to stcroix.com for those special fam rates to go explore, experience St. Croix before the, the season hits. Thank you. So we hope that we've been able to show you our nice experience and that we will continue as we start the official conference this evening to really be able to immerse you into the culture uh, the peoples, we've invited many local individuals that are um, either, uh, they are historians, that many of them are culture bearers to many of our activities to interface because we believe that they are a part of our overall product and they provide the flavor of what is truly and uniquely Virgin Islands. Again, thank you for being here and uh, any one of us from our team, we're open for your questions.